we are ready to continue and continuing means that we are now ready to make the connection the software connection between the EV3 and the PC using our SSH software SSH stands for secure shell and as I said before you could use PuTTY to establish that secure shell connection if you're on Windows or and this is what I recommend you can use a free program called MOBA Xterm Home Edition which is what I am going to describe in this video if you return to the getting started page we can see that we have some help here getting connected to the EV3 with SSH and this advice then for Windows is to use the program called PuTTY. I'm advising against PuTTY myself because I prefer Mobile XTERM but you're welcome to use PuTTY if you wish. The instructions are simple enough. That's why EV3 Dev prefers it because it's obviously a very uh, simple little program right here. But I'm going to show you Mobile X term instead, which has much more power. So I'm double clicking on the Mobile X term personal edition icon, and I suggest you ask to see the menu bar only. I've used this program before, so we can see there are a couple of sessions here left over from previous sessions. We're going to click here to enter the IP address which appears on the top of the EV3 screen which you can't see but I can so I'm carefully entering the IP address that I see at the top of the EV3 screen right now and pressing enter and choose a session type Probably most of these buttons are not relevant to the EV3, but this one is. We want to set up a secure shell connection. We can specify our username here because we know that with the EV3, our username would normally be robot. It's not asking me for the password, which we know will be maker we get the same warning that you saw you should expect in PuTTY and that uh, that's because uh, I am using a different card to what I've used in the EV3 before I'm going to say I want to continue so this seems to have been successful we can see I am connected from the PC to EV3 dev I like mobile XTERM because it shows me a directory listing here. This is a listing of the contents of my robot directory or folder, which is within the home directory or folder. Right now, there are no files or folders inside the robot directory. There's only this, and this double dot is the way to move to the parent directory if I want to. So I double clicked on that I'm now in the home directory I could double click again and you can start to see the the structure of the the files and directories on the micro SD card we'll rarely want to go in there so I'm going back to the place where you want to be almost always which is the robot directory inside the home directory I'll also point out that this panel here is called the SFTP panel these icons here are very useful we can quickly look through this takes me to the parent directory so it's the same as double clicking here we can download selected files or upload selected files the current folder that would mean coming then from the PC into this folder and downloading would be my way of backing up for example Python files that I have here to the PC I can refresh the contents of this directory if I want to. I can create a new directory easily right here. I can create a new file which I'll be doing very often. That's the recommended way to make 
Python files to work with. I can delete selected files. Let's already show how easy it is to make a, a Python file, an empty Python file. I'm going to click Create New File. I'm going to type a name for my new file. So this will be, let's call it motor hyphen test and very important the extension dot py click OK and we can see we now have a file inside our robot directory the file is called motor hyphen test dot py we know it's empty and of course you may be wondering what happens if I double click this file if I double click this file the uh, the Python IDE or integrated development environment on my computer opened directly automatically because I've used Mobax term before you can see this is uh, pycharm.edu and that's the Python IDE that I recommend so this is my Python file right here I could probably type a little program here I'm using Python 3 so I need the parentheses with the print command I'm just going to type of course hello world as this is like the tradition so that should be um, a, a program that should work for me and I can simply save that file save all autosave and as it says it won't be ask me this question again during this session so autosave yes we don't see any differences here but we think that this is no longer an empty file but that it contains some Python code so I should be able to run this so how do you run a Python program I clicked on this panel so that this has the focus now so that my typing goes here I suggest you always use Python version 3 and to activate a Python 3 program you should be able to simply type Python 3 and the name of the program that we just made motor hyphen test dot py and what's going to happen the program works and prints on the screen here Hello world, of course we're not using any robotic features here, but I've just demonstrated how you can make a Python program, how you can edit it, how you can run it. This is all worthwhile. And of course, sometimes you want to put your Python code into an actual program or script, and sometimes you just want to run it instantly, line by line. So we can open the Python 3 interpreter just by typing Python 3 and we get the triple symbol there that tells us we're in Python I can type a command such as print hello again and press enter and that command is run instantly when you want to exit the Python interpreter you can type exit or you can more easily type control D on the keyboard and now we're back with the Linux command line the permissions here don't include any X's there are no executable permissions set here. We can also see that if I open, if I expand this panel, we can see the access rights here don't include any X's. So that means this program could not be run on the EV3. It All it does is print anyway, so that probably wouldn't make any sense on the EV3 itself. But let me show you how to make a file executable. Okay, you need to type a Linux command for this, and you don't need many Linux commands to work with the EV3 Python, but you do need at least half a dozen. And one of the ones that you need is this. 
C-H-M-O-D, change mode, in other words, space plus X. We're going to, the, the plus X means make the file executable, and the file that we want to change in that way to make executable, we know is called motor-test.py. When I run that, you don't see anything happen, except that we don't get an error message, so you can be confident that the permissions have been changed. If I point at this file, you can see now that there are no X's, but you've guessed that's only because the directory listing is out of date. If I refresh the directory listing here, or the folder, and check again my file, you can see that there are three X's in there now, and I know that this file has, has been made executable. The Linux command I just typed is completely unintuitive, makes me not want to use Linux more than I have to, so th this once again is why I recommend MOBA Xterm, because you can see, we can see there's a lot of things that you can do without using Linux commands here, the creating of files, the naming of files, the deletion of files. If I want to delete a file, right-click, delete. If I want to rename a file, I can rename a file. If I right-click here, you can see I can easily make a new directory. All of these things otherwise would need Linux commands that might be difficult to guess or memorize. My site ev3python.com contains a list of the most useful Linux commands. By the way, the default behavior when you double-click a file is not to open the file in PyCharm EDU, of course, because most people don't have PyCharm EDU on their PC. The default behavior would be to open the file in the default text editor of MOBA Xterm, and I can show you how to switch between the two behaviors. We can go here to Settings and Configuration, and you can see on my computer the default text editor program is set to be PyCharm EDU because I clicked here and navigated to the PyCharm.exe program on my PC but initially the setting would be this MOBA text editor and we can see that if I switch back to that default then double clicking uh, Python file with a .py extension is going to open this MOBA text editor and it's giving me some helpful colors here because it's recognized that this is uh, a Python file from the extension. So the colors are helpful but it's not going to do any autocomplete meaning that if I half type a word it will guess the, the rest of the word for me, saving me some time, and it's not going to do any debugging help for me either. So this is not ideal. Yes, you can write Python programs here. It's uh, not, not difficult. You can make your changes and just... I'll make some changes here. I'll print uh, by. I can save those changes. There's an asterisk here to say I have unsaved changes. Save my changes, and those changes are saved neatly straight back into the EB3. I don't have to worry about moving a file from the PC to the EB3. So if I close this now and run the same file that I ran before, you can't do it here. You have to do it here, clicking in this panel the black panel and typing like I did before. You don't have to type necessarily. You can also press the up arrow. The SSH programs behave unintuitively for a Windows user. You can press the up arrow here and it's like a history of the commands that you've typed in the past. So pressing again and again I've uh, got the command that I need without having to retype it. If I press enter now It runs the, the new modified program, Hello World Goodbye, 
And and while we're talking about the quirky behavior of this SSH connection, let me say also that control V and control C would not work in the way that you would normally expect. If you want to copy something here in this window, all you need to do is select it, select it, and it's already in the computer's clipboard ready to be pasted elsewhere. As long as that text is selected, it will be in the clipboard. If you want to paste, then in PuTTY you would simply right-click and in Mobile Xterm you need to right-click and choose Paste. So I, I see again, Control c Control v don't work in the way that a Windows user might expect.